detail. I, I was looking around for a clock because I don't want to go over time. Well, I will uh, I'll give you I'll one of these when there's five minutes left or one of these when there's ten. Ten is good because yeah. I'd like to leave some time for yeah. questions and answers. You got it. Okay. And thank you for that introduction. And I, I do want to thank Bill and Scott and Joe for running this organization that meets every Friday morning. I have been participating and I have learned so much from the various speakers. So I'm very happy and um, very, I just feel very good that they let me speak here because I've seen such good speakers and I've learned so much. So it's just nice to give back. Uh, today's presentation is entitled The Marketing Equation and the Customer's Journey. They fit together. It's gonna to be about two parts to the presentation. We'll get into the pieces of paper. I know you've already perused those um, slightly, so that's okay. And we're gonna start with the customer's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, with the customer's journey. Because if you're like most small business owners or micro business owners that I talk with, one of your prime concerns is talking with prospects and converting prospects. <coughs> converting prospects to buyers, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe throughout the year, but we're talking with prospects. And the thinking of a prospect or potential buyer is different than the thinking of a potential seller. You with me on that? I'm certainly talking to prospects differently than when I'm a prospect. Like at Lazy Boy the other day, now I'm in the, I'm in the buyer's chair, and it's, it's kind of unique. Um, hopefully take care of that here. <laughs> Are those your birds? <laughs> I wish I could say they were. They're, they're pretty birds. No. No, oh, there we go. There it goes. I'm going to have to keep moving around here. So, the buyer's journey. I'm, Maybe your business is like my business, where most of the people I talk with are not now buyers. They're buyers who are somewhere in the process of possibly in the future becoming a now buyer. <laughs> they may be in the stage of thinking, maybe they need what you have. Maybe they don't, they're just investigating. Maybe they've seen what you've got, and they're wondering if you've got what they need or someone else does, and they're in that process of choosing who to buy from. So we just call this, very simple, simply the buyer's journey. And only one to 5% of the people we talk with are now buyers. And I was um, about an hour and a half outside of Rome towards the southeast one time. And I'm at, well, I was at the start in Rome, I'm talking with my buddy in Rome, and that's like an hour and a half southwest or southeast of Raleigh, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And so he's like, we gotta go talk with my buddy, <coughs> Giuliano, tomorrow. I'm like, okay, let's go. So we drive out there with this beautiful little town in Italy, there's a whole bunch of countryside, and then you have a town like that, old building, probably 400 years old, which is like nothing over there. And we walk in and, and I start to do the presentation and Giovanni's there and his daughter's there and his mother's there and the grandma's there. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, because she's busy in the kitchen. That's how it works. And I'm doing the presentation and things are going good. It's all in Italian. And Giovanni gets up and he says, hold on right there. Goes into the other room, comes back a minute later with hundred dollar bill on the table, he says, I'm in. I didn't know who was a now buyer. But I learned when you're selling and doing a sales presentation, once you have sold, stop the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the hundred dollars, we filled out some forms, that was the first payment of an ongoing process. And um, we went back with my buddy. We went, we went, um, had some nice pasta with some Romano cheese, got ready for the morning meeting. We're like, wow, that was a great thing. He's like, yeah, that's awesome. This is awesome. That, that never happened again. <laughs> <laughs> so some folks are real lucky. They, they've got a business that's now buyers. Like if you get locked outside of your car 
and you're in Fayetteville and you don't want to stay in Fayetteville that evening, <laughs> you're a now buyer. <laughs> right? You're <laughs> so not a whole lot of research involved. But most of the people we talk with are somewhere in that phase and we've got to meet the buyer where they are. Because they're not gonna come to where we are. So we've gotta meet them where they are. And that's where you get into, you get into the marketing equation. And there's only a couple things you need to write down. I see a couple people making notes if you're real smart. Like Scott, you can remember this. The buyer's journey is one. Because hopefully with the talking you'll remember what that means. Here's the second thing to write down. The marketing equation. Interrupt, engage, inform, and offer. slide so <laughs> one more time <laughs> interrupt engage inform and offer what does interrupt mean you've got to get people's attention how many ads do we see every day how many marketing messages do we see every day in 1970s they said it was about 500 a day in the early 2000s they were saying 4,000 a day mm. And the research I looked at last night is saying today between 4,000 and 10,000 marketing messages a day. I look at my buddy Nevin and he's telling me to buy Columbia and, and Fairway mortgages. And Scott's <laughs> telling me Scott coaching. And it's not Scott coaching. Scott Moore. It's just Scott Moore coaching. Got my buddy Tom over there. So that's three right there. Neil, I can see your, your tag there too. But there we go. Thank you, sir. That's <laughs> On the way to work today, I see Boston Market, right? I'm Kildare, a lot of you guys know that. You pass by it every day. Have you seen it every day? We filter it out. They don't put Boston Market there so that the employees driving to work can find where they're going. The car in front of me is a Toyota. The people over here, a Hyundai, a Mercedes, pass me at the light. How do I know that? Because the emblem's on the back. Why is the emblem on the back? so that I can see it. That's a marketing message. Most of the time we filter it out. I pass by Cary Dental Association. I pass by the whole church. I started to go crazy. And I asked my filters to come back online. <laughs> so what we've got to do as, as independent business folks, we've got to break through that filter because we're all filtering it out. How do we do that? We interrupt. You've got to be creative. You've got to be unique. You've got to hit the emotional content. You've got to enter the conversation that's going on inside the brain of the people, the people you want to talk with. How many of you all talk to yourself? Okay, how many of you who didn't raise your hand just said, I don't talk to myself? <laughs> <laughs> to ourselves all the time, every day. And we've got to enter into that conversation. Somehow, when we're sitting with people, we've got to enter into that conversation. And I'm going to show you an example here, real quick, of a child psychologist. And this is a, a fellow that my organization worked with um, a few years ago. And, or I should say my, or not my organization, but an organization I work with. It's, I think it is my organization. <laughs> This was his ad, Parenting Advice and Resources from Dr. John Smith. And he's got nine different specialties circled there. What's his offer? What's his, what's his engagement? What is his, what's his interrupt? I don't know. It says free consultation, okay. How many other child psychiatrists offer free consultations? All of them. Oh, okay, all right, so that, there's nothing special there. And his phone number's there. He's got a little video, and he basically says, get on my site, I have hundreds, or even thousands of resources that you can access and, and help you out, and if you have any of these problems, we can help you out. It takes someone about five seconds to get off of that website and move on. If you've got a child screaming in the other room, today it's, it's worse than, than it used to be, I think. Um, thank God my child, children are grown and gone. <laughs> I love them, it was great having them at home, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to end
edit that on the video. <laughs> <laughs> so we changed his marketing message. The interrupt now says, are you sick and tired of the yelling, screaming, and belligerent attitude of your child? If that's not your case, you're gone. But if that is your case, they've got you. What's the subheadline is engaged. Now we've interrupt, let's engage. And that's the solution, the subheadline. The headline interrupts, subheadline engages. And you can think of this as your marketing message, be it a flyer, be it your website, your squeeze page, your landing page, your 30 second commercial. We'll just call them all marketing messages today. Now you can discover the secrets of controlling your child and instantly restore peace and quiet in your home. Does that sound good? <laughs> Sounds pretty good. So he's, uh, he's it, talking a secret to an audience. Do you think he might be getting a few more conversions, a, few, a little more interest on this website than on the other one? And what's his offer? His phone number's not even on there. Because if we're in that investigating stage, we don't want to talk to somebody. Because what are we going to get? We're going to get a sales conversation or, you know, that pressure kind of thing. Um, we don't want that. It says sign up here. There's a number of different resources. Of 60 seconds, you'll learn how to apply immediately. His video basically says this. Are you, as a parent, are you struggling to gain control of your, the attitude and emotions of your child? Is your child screaming at you while often displaying belligerent <coughs> attitudes, sometimes this, this, and the other thing? The offer is here at the end. Enter your first name and email in the box to the right. I'll send you a series of 60-second techniques that will immediately restore peace and quiet to your home. Don't need to talk with anybody. All you need to do is give your email, your name and your email, and we all know you can unsubscribe from those real easy. His conversion rates went up tremendously. Everybody says, call me. In fact, now I have to go over to the computer. I hope I don't mess things up over here. Last night I said, what, what can I look at over here? What, what can I see? And I, and I Googled lawn care in Raleigh. And I didn't click on the ads. I didn't click on the Yelp that says the 10 best lawn care people. I, I clicked on the individual websites. And um, I'm, not, I'm not busting on anybody here. I don't think I ever met anyone here that does lawn care. If you do, my apologies. I could have picked most, any, most anything. Lawn Care Rally, easily book services and appointment. Click a button and book your service. All right, hey, that's, that's good, okay. Life right, right now. Homes are personal, lawns you should, should be too. Yep, that's right, okay, great. Receive 20, oh, that, now that's good. Receive a response in 20 minutes or less, I like that. Fairway green, beautiful lawn, nice green sprinklers. All right, that's great. Fill out here to schedule something. I don't even know who you are. Wake Pro Lawn Care, lawns, beautifully done. More, more green, okay, that's great. Uh, what's their offer? I've gotta scroll down, what are they offering? Oh, there we go, contact us for a free consult. I don't even know if I want to do that. This guy, the football, it's football season. I like football, maybe I'll call them, maybe not. It doesn't have much to do with my yard. Um, click here for a free estimate. Okay, there's another one. Lawn and order. I kind of like that. That's kind of <laughs> It's a play on words. And, um, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, now, as soon as I said that, and, and I reviewed what we're going to review here in a little bit, that's like, that's like if, if you're trying to reach a top, that's like down here, play on words. But it's kind of cool. I might call it. Uh, Lindsay, one. Um, News and Observer, okay, they said something about them, we don't know what, I wonder if you could click on that. Uh, yeah, you could, okay, whatever. And more beautiful lawns, maybe we can find out some information. Um, but they're not striking an emotional tone. Why would I hire someone? What, what's going on in my brain if I'm looking to not do my lawn anymore? What you're, am I thinking? You're tired of spending the time on it. Okay. Your back hurts. My, <laughs> you know me too well. Um, I don't have time. I don't want the smell of oil and gas and all that stuff in my garage. I don't need that. Um, so I don't see anyone hitting that emotional. But that's just me <laughs> and maybe a lot of other people. Um, I, would, I would talk with them and say, hey, let's, let's interrupt. And then let's engage and offer the solution.
So we engage and then we inform. And we inform them because why? Because they're not ready to make a decision. And what do we want to inform them? That we're the best choice. That when they're ready to make a decision, there's one choice and there's one choice only. If they want to go with the best, that's me. When you're talking with yourself, you say, that's me. That's a dream <coughs> campaign, perhaps. If all you have is a phone number on your website, you have no way to get back in touch with them, right? If you get their name and their, their, their either physical address, you could send them something, or their email address, which is a lot easier today, you can send them an email. Keep them engaged, keep them informed, so that when they're ready to buy, <coughs> they know who to go through, because you educated them on the product or the service, and then you've educated them why you're the best. And some of you may have seen those reports, like a, um, 10 things to know before you hire a contractor. 10 things to know before you hire a mortgage broker. And those are good reports. Obviously it's written and your business is constructed so that you hit those 10 points right on. Sometimes this involves reinventing your business. Sometimes you've already got it. If you're unique, if you're the best, if you have an offer that hits home with your niche market, you're all set. Now let's just find a way to communicate that out there. Now you can look at what's on the table. We tried to set that up with the white paper on top. Thinking, oh, it's a blank piece of paper. You leave it alone, but <laughs> that we didn't think that. Um, there's the effect, there is, I'm not gonna put it on the screen, because I didn't get around to doing that, so I need, I'm gonna need one here. So this is a quick valuation, and if you flip it over, you'll notice it's the same on both sides. That's because we look at things differently than someone else will look at things. <clears throat> so we can go over the one side today, later today, tomorrow, you could sit down with someone or sit down in front of your website or your marketing piece and go over it again. But let's go over it. How much time do you have, Scott? How are we doing? Um, if you want to leave time for questions, I'd, oh, uh, uh, I'd run for about seven more minutes. Perfect. <clears throat> so let's, so basically. <clears throat> sorry, folks. Take care of that. Basically, what we have is a zero to five. Five being really good, you're knocking it out of the park. And zero, I, I like zero. Totally wrong concepts, try again. Hopefully we have no zeros. And there's just five points to go over. The interrupt the headline. Think about your website or your landing page or a marketing piece that you have. How is your headline? Do you have no headline? Is it the company name or play on words? Law and order. Yeah, see I like law and order. But on this you would give them a one. The headline exists, but it has a poor hot button. Hot button's activated, but not, not, not articulated well. A good headline, and then a powerhouse headline. Okay, where are you on that? Number two is engage. A promise to educate. Okay, this is the sub-headline. It responds to the headline. It answers the question, basically says, here's the solution. Here's what you want to hear. See, people will buy for, for two reasons. They have a problem that they don't want to have, or there's a result that they want and they don't have yet. That's the sub-headline, the result that they want that they don't have yet. Or where are you there, from zero to five. And then building your case. No case building, that's a zero. Some features, menus listed, not really compelling. Number two is case points begin, but not developed. Three case points listed with some qualification quantification. Four builds a good case and anticipation educates thoroughly, but could be more powerful. Number five is you're hitting it out of the park. It's a well-rounded case. Judge, jury would say, proudly say, I have to be an idiot not to buy from you. The next one is the offer. No risk or risk reversal which means the customer doesn't take on the risk, you take on the risk. <coughs> How do you do that? There are ways to do that. 
If there's no offer at all, you got a zero. Contact info is present. Nothing specifically mentioned as an offer. And then five all the way to excellent. There's an offer. There's a choice for the now buyer. There's a choice for the future buyer. It's irresistible, compelling. It's opt-in. You're collecting emails and you're being able to stay in contact with folks. And the last one is the powerful. How powerful is it? And how elegant is it? I used to tell my, my second language speak, speakers, I say, in six months, I'm going to get you speaking English. You're going to understand. You're going to be able to talk. Not very well, not very eloquently. We'll work on that later. So if your website is in that stage, you can work on that later or sooner. If you've done this um, and you're ready to add up the points and divide by five, to see where you fall on this scale. <coughs> it's an interesting, I find it an interesting quick revision. And when I review someone's website or marketing message, I might be a little more critical than most. Um, that's kind of <laughs> If it's good, I'll point it out. I'll let you know. We'll congratulate, we'll high five and have a drink. If it's bad, I will let you know with kind words. <laughs> so now there's another sheet of paper and we'll go over this real quick from one to three one is not so good three is knocking it out of the park two is so so is your message differentiated from your competition if you're not sure go home and open up five or six websites and see if you could replace your name with their name or their message with your message and if anything would change. How is your process with the non-now buyers? Again, three, you're knocking it out of the park. Number one, there's lots of room for improvement. How strong and unique is your marketing dominating position? And the last one is what you're doing is what you are doing working at the level that you are getting the results that you want to get. It may be working, but is it working at the level you want it to work to get the results that you want to get? And then if, if you want to take those ones and make them threes, a good place to get started is on the free video series that I offer on my website. All I'm asking for is a first name and an email address and you'll get some videos That'll help you knock those one and twos up to threes. And if you'd like to schedule a 45 minute conversation, free conversation with myself, you can do so at that website down there below at, at your convenience. It's just a, a bunch of times that I have made open to myself for you to schedule with um, according to your schedule. And that's a free conversation, no pressure, no sales. It is more of an educational type thing. And at this point, I'd like to open it up for questions. You can ask me anything. Um, what do you mean on, on this sheet right here? What, what does it mean uh, about how strong and unique is your market dominating position? What is, what is market dominating position? A market dominating position is your business positioned to dominate the market to crush the competition if we want to say no maybe that's a little old term but to, to position yourself as the best option out there because when folks are looking for coaches they're probably not just looking at you they're probably looking at a number of different coaches so for the niche market that you're looking at you want to position yourself as being the best as being the only choice after they've done their research, why would they choose anyone else? Scott is awesome. So that's a market dominating position. Got it. You might think about Domino's. So Domino's began, was, were there pizza places before Domino's? Sure. Yeah, there were a lot of them. Domino's grew exponentially. What did they do? They, they did cheap pizza delivered to you. And what the, there's not a lot of eat-in space in most of them. You just pick up your pizza and go. Where did they put their pizza places in the beginning? They put them near college dorm rooms. 
They opened later, they stayed open later than other <coughs> pizza places, and they marketed heavily to those college students. Order your pizza on the phone, come pick it up, get back to your dorm room to your partying or your studying, whatever you happen to be doing at that hour, and it's quick, it's fast, it's cheap. They dominated the market. That's a market dominating position. Okay. We gave free pizzas to our I know. That was one of those RAs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. Hi. Um, so, this is in no way an attack at all. I'm just trying to understand. But on this paper, um, in the second bullet point, you started with uh, get started for free with your video series. And I was wondering why you chose to say get started for free as opposed to um, more of a, you know, solve this problem with my four or five video series. It's, when I read Get Started for Free, I'm assuming that your video series is part of a sales presentation and that when I get to the fourth, the third one, it's going to drop off and I have to pay to actually get the answer. So Not the case at all. And thank you for bringing that up. There's very little fluff in these videos. There's, very, there's some sales. There's very little. Most of what is going on in those sales, they'll talk about um, your 30 second commercial. There's a video on your business card, which we could say business card or flyer. And it talks about um, how to communicate your message. Yeah, and it is four videos. Uh, the first one talks about all the things that are wrong with a whole lot of the marketing today. And then it goes into teaching how to how to fix that and how to adjust that in your own marketing material. Yeah. And after the four videos, there's a series of um, of emails that come out that are not videos, but there's a series of emails. Some at the end, there's some sales, of course. I mean, I think we all do that, but it's not heavy. There's a lot of information there, and it's real easy to unsubscribe. You hit unsubscribe, you're done. Thank, thank you for the question. Did I answer? Um, halfway. Um, okay. <laughs> so the, the intention of all that is obviously to get me involved in your services or benefit or whatever. Um, so the purpose of is, would that be something a statement that you put on a on a website as well or only on a written communication? It it actually is on my website. Okay. Yes. If you go to that website, and I think it's for the eaglebusinessservices.com, you'll see um, it's, it's set up as a website slash landing page at this point. On the right-hand side is a sign-up. If you scroll down a little bit, there's a video of the week, which is even less commitment because there's no email, there's no personal information required, and it changes every week. Um, the four-video series starts at the beginning and goes through the <coughs> steps. And there is value there. It's not like you have to go to the fourth video where you have to pay. And, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I think I saw a hand go up over here. Yes. So the conversion equation uh, evaluator. Here you talk about website, but basically that's a process you would do when you talk to your prospect. Right. right? Yeah. So okay. you would have. We might have the same thing in a thirty-second commercial. You want to grab someone's attention. You're not looking to grab everyone's attention in the room. Have you ever seen an ad on the television or heard it on the news? And if they go on for 20 or 30 seconds, and afterwards you look at your wife or your spouse, your husband, and you say, what was that about? <laughs> Has that ever happened? Yes. That ad was not for you. That was for someone who understood what they were talking about. <laughs> you were not the niche market. They weren't trying to get you. They were trying to get someone else. So the 30-second commercial, um, this month, I, my 30-second commercial began with, I help business owners sleep better at night. Kind of got some chuckles sometimes, sometimes got some interest. My sub-headline was then an answer to that. How do you do that? <coughs> That's it. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Well, Much information. 
I mean, I was surprised because since then I've met people in his business that have given me like one or two tiny little things, and then they're like, I, and these are my consulting fees. And I'm like, dang, I hardly got anything out of that. But, but Joe provides an amazing amount of information for free. It's not a lot of, I mean, there are sales and things, yeah, that's our job, but it, it just provides a lot of information. So I just want to say that I've been through the series, I get his emails now, they're always informative. Um, but my question was, so for a new person like myself, as you know, I had, um, have not quite um, started this yet. Do you work with people from the very beginning? So you, oh, we've talked about this before and I haven't done it yet, but working with people from the very, very beginning. So this basically talks about like your web page or your landing page or your squeeze page. I don't have any of that. So my, corp my website is my corporate website, but I need to create something so that I can be gathering email addresses and be providing, setting myself apart, doing all these things. I haven't done that. Do you do that? Yes, I do. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, and I, I appreciate the comment and the question. Yes, if you don't have a, uh, your own personal website or landing page or squeeze page, we'll, we'll get together and figure out what is going to work best, what is your market-dominating position, and how to communicate that in the right way. And then we look at who, who are you going after. So it all kind of, who's your niche market? We need to know that, because if, if your market is, um, and it, it may be, it may not be, um, retired folks who go to the Wilmington Yacht Club, you're going to have a different message for them than the millennials who have who have come over from another country and are working in the RTP area. There's going to be a different message for those markets. So we need to know that, and then we, we, we make the market, and um, that would mark the market. Yes. Okay. And I, I just wanted to add something. I, I do a skin wellness workshop, and Joe came over one time and he actually gave me a really great feedback on my presentation. It was really, really good. Um, so, thank you. Thank you, Bree. I just I wanted to make a, a follow-up uh, comment to what Laura said. Because if you do have a good handle on this stuff, right, like, I'm uh, speaking towards the people who are like really just getting started. The first thing that everybody thinks they need is a, is a web page. And maybe they're right. But if, and if you hire a marketing company to do your web page, then hopefully they're asking you a lot of these kinds of questions. But most people don't because that's usually more expensive. So they hire a web designer or they get their cousin to do it. And the cousin will make you a web page, but the cousin doesn't know this stuff. Or the web designer that only makes web pages is asking you, well, what do you want on the web page? And maybe you don't know how to, so, so going through a process like this, of understanding these points of engagement will help you create that better if, if you're not in a position to hire a full market to do that. So yes. I think that's really No, cool. excellent. If you think back to the lawn care company, beautiful looking websites, beautiful looking yards and houses and children. Football was, you know, that was okay with the football. Um, but beautiful <laughs> websites. <laughs> Are they working? And I used to tell when I was building websites, I would say, do you want a beautiful website or do you want a website that gets you customers? And the woman who has a design company said, I want both. I said, okay, that's gonna be doable. <laughs> <laughs> but you can charge that because it's gonna provide instant value to them, right, or the seat resort. Yes. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you, and thank you for participating. Great. Well, hey, next week we have our very own and very beloved Brent Kapler, who's not here this morning, but I have a hunch that he'll be here next week. Yeah. So, go out uh, Scott, here. Uh, I forgot here about the drawing. I have to do the drawing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of it.